it's our last day of class. And so it's kind of time to sort of look back at the semester and think about where we started off and where we are now and looking at that, why are we here? Why do we do this? Why do we show up to class and draw weird things that the teacher constructs on a little platform? Why did we make a thousand tags? Why did we make, ooh, I can't do the math on this now, but probably at least 30 or 40 gesture drawings, if not more. Have to like look at the calendar for that one. Why do we do all this stuff? Eh? Anyone? To pass the class. Pragmatism as always. Good perspective to have. Anybody have any other thoughts as to why we're here, why we're doing all of this stuff, why this is important? To get better. To get better, to practice. Practice, absolutely. Um, I kind of have, or at least I look at, it, at what I do in the classroom and what I um, facilitate with all of you wonderful people, because I kind of am into trying to teach as a facilitator, as somebody who is saying, hey, what do you guys want to learn today? And trying to work around projects and make projects that you want to do around concepts that you want to learn. Because, yeah, I mean, by the time you get to an advanced class like this, you know the basics, and there are a few other things, but really, you know the basics, so it's your turn to kind of put it in your hands and take charge of, of what you want to do. And the reason why I am really into that teaching is because that's life. I mean, here is a beautiful, beautiful exception to life. Um, but out in the world, it's pretty much having to do what we do in here, having to make your own job, having to make your own life, having to make your own fun. Uh, and so, first of all, you know, if I can, can do my best to provide a situation where you can have a place to kind of explore what you want to do in that, great. Secondly, when you're out in the real world, uh, whether you are an artist or whether you are an accountant or whether you are a microbiologist or a brain surgeon, or a custodian, or a chef, or a baker, or a candlestick maker, uh, creativity is always going to be one of your greatest assets, and learning how to solve problems creatively is always going to be one of your greatest assets. Because when you learn how to solve problems creatively, that gives you opportunity and that gives you freedom to be entrepreneurial, to achieve your goals because you can look at a goal you want to achieve and say, okay, here are all of the resources I have, here is the time I have, how can I put these together to get what I want to do and have everything work out. And so that, that thought process is kind of one of the things that we do here. And for me, it's probably the most important because when you are able to be creative, it doesn't matter what you're doing, you can still make it work and you can still kind of solve problems. Um, and I mean, to abstract that into even further and more grandiose terms, you know, as you folks are not really all that much younger than I am, I mean, in the grand scope of things, um, you know, basically, we all are going to have to move forward and face a lot of different challenges, both in terms of our own lives, in terms of like finding a job, finding a job you like, making money to eat, putting a roof over your head, shoes, um, that kind of stuff. But on a macro scale, like <coughs> climate change and poverty and generally making life pleasant for the six billion people on the surface of the earth. And so, even if you aren't somebody 
who is thinking, well, okay, so I've got my graduate school apps in, and I think I want, want an MFA, and I'm going to go right into studio practice with a side of teaching, um, which is perfectly all right. Uh, it works for some, but not everybody says that. And honestly, um, if say when I was graduating from college or graduating from well, if you're, well, when I was graduating from college, if you said, "Oh, are you going to teach?" I would say. I would rather set myself on fire than teach people. And then I got some experience doing it, and I found out that I really, really like it. I really like working with you students, because you're all great. But if you come out of here and you, say, spend two years in Sweden um, shearing sheep, do they have sheep in Sweden? I think they have sheep in Sweden. And then come out of it saying, I want to be an environmental scientist. I'm going to go to grad school and I'm going to get a PhD in organic biology. Great, because you'll still have the thought process that you learned in my class and in all your other art classes. And you'll be able to say, oh, well, gee, if I take this particular uh, gene and flip it that way, huh? then I can quadruple the amount of CO2 this algae eats on a daily basis, and we might be able to bring the temperature of the planet down one degree, which would be like 